you are all set to write your memoir. You've been brainstorming all the scenes and the stories and the messages you want in there. You have told a few people about it, only trusted people, of course, and you have planned that you are gonna start it this weekend. Except you were gonna start it last weekend and the weekend before and the weekend before that. Somehow, something always comes up to derail your plans. Well, if this sounds like you, then you have got what I call memoir writer's block. Yes, a very specific problem to have. And don't worry, because today we're gonna cover all the ways to clear out that head trash and get you moving forward on the book you know you need to write. Stay tuned. You wanna know the biggest reason that first time memoirists fail to finish their book? they don't have a plan. And that is why my team at Page and Podium has put together an absolutely free resource called the Memoir Method Checklist. It is going to take you all the way through from that very first seed of an idea all the way to when you get to hold that beautiful book in your hands. You can download this resource right now at pageandpodium.com slash checklist and get started making your plan so you can be sure you're one of the lucky ones that finishes and holds that book. Happy writing. Friends, you are not alone. Trust me, I have had clients who have spent a decade going through memoir writer's block, writing a little bit, deleting it, or writing a little bit more, deleting that too. It can be such a mind game to get yourself in the right place to actually get all of those precious, intimate stories down on the page. That goes three or four times as much if you are writing a trauma memoir. It's just so hard to get started but don't worry, I have got four tips today that are time tested and guaranteed to get you unstuck from that place because you have got to get this memoir down. It means so much to you, I know it does. So let's get moving. All right, my first tip. Now, this is not the sexiest tip. <laughs> it's not even high tech at all. In fact, it's the same thing that people have been doing for decades. Start a journal. Now, before you turn off YouTube, let me clarify what I mean, because I know a lot of us are giving this advice to write in your journal and journal every day. That is all well and good, but if you're not sure what you're supposed to be putting in the journal, it can be really hard even to get started with that, let alone to use that to clear out your writer's block, right? So I wanna go a little more into depth by what I mean by using your journal here. One thing to remember is that as we're creating any kind of creative project, that can be a book or an article, it could even be you know visual art or photography, anything that we're creating, we are gonna have to flex that creative muscle. If you are not used to creating things regularly, it's really to be expected that it's gonna take you a lot longer to kind of clear out the gunk and get, get going, right? Same thing would be true if you've ever, I live in the Midwest, <laughs> if you have ever left your car out and it's really, really cold and you just go to start it and it's just really chugging to get going. It's the same thing that's gonna happen if you have not been using that creative muscle. You are gonna to have to really do a little extra work to get started and get going. And that is where this journaling tip comes in. So this is a tip that I am borrowing from an amazing book called The Artist's Way. If you have not heard of The Artist's Way, the author is Julia Cameron. And this is a whole course actually in this book to help creative people get unstuck, get their kind of creative flow back. I highly recommend this course. I will say many people buy this book and start it and don't finish it. <laughs> Myself included, it took me a long time to get through. But I wanna just give you one of the tips that she gives away right away in the introduction. And that is what she calls morning pages. This is what I mean by journaling. So all that Cameron is telling us to do is get ourselves a journal. I like the Jumping Fox brand, by the way, if you want recommendations, but get yourself a little journal and every morning, the first thing when you get up, write longhand, not on Microsoft Word, longhand by hand, write three pages. 
Now, I'll tell you, the first few days, this is so fun and liberating. <laughs> you get to about day five or six or seven, and it gets, it can get a little bit tougher, right? Same thing with writing a book. The first chapters are always easier than that midpoint. So here's what you're going to do. When you are doing your morning pages, Julia Cameron style, you are not writing your memoir. Now that is really, really important. And one of the things that Cameron actually says is that the morning pages are harder for writers and aspiring writers than they are for, say, dancers or visual artists because we are so critical of ourselves, right? Even when we are just supposed to be writing, pouring our brain out, just getting all those thoughts down and out of our head, we can be so critical. We can end up editing our journaling. Here's the thing with morning pages. We are not going to do that. When you are writing your morning pages, the whole entire point is just to keep your hand moving until you have three full pages. Now, what are we doing here? Because this is an important clarification. Like I said, we are not writing memoir scenes. And I want you to really hold off and really hold yourself accountable that you do not use your morning pages to try to get stuff on the page that you want to then, you know, type up and write into your memoir. What you're actually doing in your morning pages is you're getting rid of all that self-doubt, those kind of gunky things that we say to ourselves. And a lot of times what Cameron says is that when we wake up, we our heads are just full of that stuff. The first step in unblocking our creativity is to get it all out, get it on the page, because you know what? When you get it on the page, you can see how wrong it is. So every morning, what you're going to do, wake up, even if you start writing, I don't know what to write, or, I don't want to do this, <laughs> that is fine. Just keep your hand moving, get those three pages out. What it's going to do is give you just a little bit of practice at just expressing. Really, that's what we're doing in memoir, right? We all want it to be professional. We want it to read like fiction. That's true. We'll get to that. But with our morning pages, all we're doing is just getting those juices flowing, getting that muscle to just flex just a little bit. So tip one, I want you to get a journal, get a nice journal that you're going to be excited to write in. I like to use different colored pens for different days. Looks kind of pretty. <laughs> Whatever your style is, in the morning, do not skip your morning pages. Whether you need to put it in your calendar, whether you need to, you know, tell your kids, tell your husband, tell whoever is around you, like, hey, don't bother me. I've got to do my morning pages. This is going to be the first step in really making sure that you have cleared out the pathways and that you are ready then when you move from that handwritten journal to your Microsoft Word document. You may be surprised, by the way, at how quickly this happens. But give it some time, give it a week or two, see if you don't feel a little bit better and if you don't start to believe in yourself a little bit more and feel just much more motivated to sit down and do that big project you've been wanting to do. Okay, so once we have got our morning pages, our journaling out of the way, our second tip is to recruit some support. Now, if you have been watching this channel for very long, you know I am a huge advocate of asking for the help you need. Now, usually I'm talking about professional editors, um, you know, publishing support staff, a group program, the things that we offer at Page and Podium. That is not what I'm talking about here, though. Here, all you need is someone you trust. This might be a really close friend. Um, it might be a family member. Often I find um, that it's really helpful if you have adult children this is something that they really might be excited to help you with. Um, but really anybody that you trust that is willing to give you just a little bit of their time and energy is going to be a really great option for this. And what you're going to have them do is interview you. Now here, this is a trick that I actually have just pulled from what we do at Page and Podium. So, Ghostwriting uh, is, was kind of what we were founded on, and the first stage of ghostwriting is always the interviews. And what I find is that when people can talk about their stories, it makes it so much easier to just get the stuff out. Then, of course, if you hire a ghostwriter, the ghostwriter will write it up for you. What I'm suggesting here, though, is have your friend or family member 
interview you about the stories that you know you want to write about. Then you can have them transcribed, you can transcribe them yourself, but what that is going to do is help you get all of the ideas dumped out and bonus if you are bringing in a really trusted person, someone that's really interested in supporting and helping you, I bet that they will be willing to give you a little bit of feedback. And now what I mean, I don't mean critique, we're not doing that here, right? We're getting unstuck, so we do not want any kind of critique or even advice. What we do want are questions. So here's what often happens. I will be interviewing someone in this capacity, essentially. I'll be asking them questions about their story. And so often, the really key details are going to be left out. So the thing that a friend can do for you is help you see the places that you have gaps in the story, the places that you have left out, you know, the feeling or the experience beyond just the facts and the data, the places where you could have more sensory information, where you could have richer descriptions. They're going to be able to ask you questions like, so, you know, where were you at the time? Where were you living when this happened? Who were you with? Were you by yourself? Were you with a group? All of these just kind of detailed questions, honestly, the same way that you would in any conversation with somebody that you care about. So all you're really asking them to do is have a really natural conversation with you. So let me kind of break down how this is going to go. So the first thing, of course, is that you're going to need to find that friend or family member. I really highly recommend that you pick one person that you can use for the entire span of getting all the stories out. This is not as big of a commitment as it might sound like. Um, you can really easily do this in six to eight hours worth, not all at once. But so if this person can give you two months, once a week, they're just going to sit with you for an hour, that is going to be plenty. So when you bring this person on board, you're going to pick a time, you're going to pick a place. Zoom works well because you can record it right on Zoom, but if the person can be there, they can use their phone. That's fine too, you can use your phone, whatever works. But you're going to get that audio recording. Make sure again, let them know that you want them to prompt you. They are going to get better at this as you get better at telling your story. So you want to make sure you've got a consistent support person in this role so that you're always building on what you've been doing in the past. They can also help you, by the way, kind of connect different stories. Did this happen before that? Did that happen before this? Etc. So you've picked your person, they're interviewing you, you are recording it um, audio specifically. The next step is you're gonna have to figure out how you want to process that information. So one thing that I really recommend, it is a little bit of an investment, but one thing that I really recommend is having a human person transcribe your audio. Now I know, you know, before you write into me, I know there are AI programs that can do this. They do okay. Um, you do what works for you. What I find is that when you have a human person transcribing your stuff for you, it is a, just a clearer transcript to work from. It, it just is going to make your life a little easier. So I did want to give you a, a referral for that. If you're interested in using you know, human transcription, the service that we use at Page and Podium is gotranscript.com. It's very affordable. Um, you can pick the five-day turnaround, and it makes it a little bit cheaper than if you needed it right away but usually they're really, really quick. So you can go ahead and submit your audio recording to your transcriber. If you want to use AI, that's fine too. Or some people are actually just fine to listen to the recording as a way to kind of um, jog their memory of what they want to talk about. But either way, that step is that you need to figure out how you want to process the stories. And then the last step is where the magic happens. <laughs> in this step, all you are going to do, print out or put up on a different, you know, different monitor or even just the side of your screen, put that transcript there, and now you are just going to write. Just go through it exactly the same way you talked, but write it the way that you want it to be written, whatever style you like and prefer, whatever your voice sounds like on the page. Now, as you go through, remember, your friend or family member prompted you with questions. That probably means that, you know, you're talking about this part up here on the transcript, and then they're going to ask you a question about that down lower. That's fine. When you get down here, you can take that bit, 
move back up on the page and insert it where it goes in your story. Now, I know it seems like, well, why can't I just write it if I'm going to go to all this trouble of telling the stories? But I promise you, for a lot, a lot of people, getting it out verbally, especially just telling a loved one about your stories, is so much faster, so much easier, so much less painful (laughs) because it's going to feel like it goes a lot faster for you. Yes, we're doing a separate storytelling and a writing time, but oftentimes it evens out to where if you were really struggling with that memoir writer's block, having that interview process is still going to be faster than if you just tried to force yourself to sit at the computer. Okay, so we talked about journaling, we've talked about having a friend or family member interview you, and let's talk about number three. Okay, this is actually one of my very, very favorites, and this is to take yourself on an inspiration date. Here's what I find. A lot of people with writer's block, whether it's memoir writer's block or really any type of writer's block you might have, really the sticking point is the sitting at the computer. I made a face because nobody likes that, right? (laughs) Especially if you're somebody that works at an office job or if you're somebody that's not all that comfortable on computers, you will sit down and really just like, ugh, you just don't want to do it, right? The energy that you had when you were planning, like, this is the weekend I'm going to start, where does that energy go? I don't know, but it seems to vanish when we sit at the computer. So an inspiration date is the antidote for that. What happens when we're dealing with that writer's block is we get so separated out from the experiences that we want to talk about, right? The experiences were ours, they're in our body, they're part of us, but when we sit down at the computer, it feels kind of cold and distant, right? So an inspiration date cannot be at your computer, it cannot be with a book. An inspiration date needs to be sensory. It needs to be something that you can do with your body. So this might be, for instance, going out to your grandparents' old farm. Now, does somebody else own it now? Yeah, but you can still, you know, pull up, you know, you can even knock and see if the people that live there will let you go in. But even if not, just be in that space. Just sit observe, kind of look around and see what you remember. A lot of times it's things like smells that will really trigger all of those those memories. In that case, you know, I remember my grandparents' farm and honestly, like even just looking on Zillow when it was listed for sale really brought so much back up for me. I was able to kind of see the ways that as a child, you know, I had imagined this huge grand farmhouse. Well, (laughs) I went out there, it's like 1,200 square feet, right? Um, So I think one of the things that you're really doing here with this inspiration date is just giving yourself a little reconnection with your why. Now, your why is probably to help people, but I guarantee underneath that, your why is to document how these people that you're talking about that you you love and you have relationships with, how do they live their life? Where were you when these things happened? Um, Another example that I would give you is, and this this is just purely something, I wasn't even planning to do this, but I will tell you, I was, uh, I went to the mall recently. I had to pick something up. I have not been to a mall in so long, (laughs) but I went in there and I instantly was like, you know where I have to go? Bath and Body Works. (laughs) And all of my fellow elder millennials, I think you will relate to this. There is something about going into Bath and Body Works that made me feel so connected with my teenage self. Just the, you know, you could spray the sample on. (laughs) Even if you don't have any money to buy any body spray, you could spray a little sample on and you feel so fancy about it, right? That can be such a powerful thing to remind you of why you wanted to tell this story, why the things that happened to you, the things you lived through, the things in your body are so powerful. So there is no homework here. Literally all you are doing is going to a place that either is the place that you're writing about Or like I said, it can be just something similar. You can go on Zillow and see if there are pictures of your childhood home. You can go through photo albums if you want to. Or better yet, find something that's gonna kind of replicate what that experience was. Go to Bath and Body Works, it's super fun. (laughs) 
but all you are doing is experiencing. You can write about it in your morning pages, of course, the next day, but there's no writing we're doing here. We are just feeling in touch with who we are, where we come from, and why our stories matter. Okay, so we're gonna do our morning pages, we're gonna be interviewed, we're gonna go on an inspiration date, and number four, last but most certainly not least, you are going to find five to 10 pictures of the time in your life that you are writing about. Bonus points, if you have pictures of the actual scene or you know, kind of something that's close to the scene, but really you just need some pictures that probably include you, the other people that were there, the scenery, as much as you can get, those pictures should be representative of whichever scene you're trying to write at that point. What I want you to do is I want you to just go through them one at a time, put it next to you on your computer desk, and I want you to just type what you see. So we're going for rich descriptions here, right? What did you look like? What were you wearing? When you look at that picture, what do you see in your expression? Was your expression what you were really feeling? Or was it kind of a mask that you were putting on, you know, in whatever way that might have looked like for you? Who were you with? What were they doing? How close are they to you? Can you see, again, on their face that they were thinking or feeling something different than they were showing? All you are doing is literally typing a description of what you see. Now, this is not a scene, right? We're not in the writing part. We're just getting the ideas flowing. But just like we were doing with our morning pages, exercising that creative muscle and, and reconnecting with the past like we did in our inspiration date is really gonna help you get started at flexing that muscle. And really, what does it mean to richly describe what you went through, to really carefully think about kind of what were you feeling and what did you look like, just to get a little bit of perspective, right? So once you finish that first one, go to the next one and the next one and the next one until you start to feel things kind of um, shake loose. You'll start to feel really unstuck at some point where you know you get it, you are writing, and at some point usually, what will happen is you will start to transition from just describing the picture to actually writing the scene. I don't want you to go in with that plan, but I have seen that happen many, many times. So get out those pictures, whether they're you know actual pictures in a photo album, pictures that you have stored in a box, or maybe they're iPhone pictures that you took pretty recently. Just start by just describing that scene and see where it takes you. Okay, well, I feel really confident that as you go through these four exercises, you are going to start to feel much more in control of your writing, much more able to sit down and feel like you can efficiently get started, and much, much, much more excited about the whole process. I know it can be so demoralizing when you feel that writer's block. You're putting aside time and you're not getting anything done. So really what we want to do is just get you unstuck. Get yourself a journal, head out to your favorite inspiration place, get a friend or family member to support you, and pull out those pictures. Let me know how this goes for you. I really want to hear about you getting started. I want to hear about all your momentum that you are able to build just by getting all of those creative juices flowing. I cannot wait to hear what you come up with. Let me know, and I'll talk to you soon. Happy writing. Writing your memoir can be one of the most rewarding, fulfilling, beneficial tasks that you can take on in this lifetime. But unfortunately, it can also be kind of a slog, especially if you don't know how to plan your time. And that is why my team has put together an absolutely free resource called the Memoir Method Checklist. This checklist is gonna take you through every single step you need from that very first seed of an idea all the way through publishing that book and holding it in your hands. We're gonna give you the steps, we're gonna give you the timeline, and we are gonna make sure that you always know where you're going, even a step before you get there. You can download this resource for free at pageandpodium.com slash checklist. And once you do, let me know what you think. I would love to hear from you, hear about your book, and hear about how your writing is going.